Great to be here. You know, I'm a travel writer. And for me, I've been thinking about this, high is a place. It's a cool place. It's a place where my speakers sound remarkably good. Where suddenly I'm a good cook. Where conversations slither around like stray cats. Sometimes I just want to go to that place, you know, it's a cool place. Other people do too. But right now, today, there's 80,000 Americans in jail because they wanted to go there. And our government says, we cannot go there. Now, there are cases when our government can say, we can't go somewhere and I'll have it and I'll buy it, you know. But there's got to be a good reason. And I've thought long and hard about this and there's no good reason for our government to tell us we can't go to the place where a lot of you are right now. I believe the responsible adult recreational use of marijuana is a civil liberty. Now, it's a drug. I'm not promoting it. it can, it's not healthy. It can be abused. It can be addictive. Kids should not have access to it. If you drive intoxicated by anything, I think they should throw the book at you. But that does not get in the way of the basic principle that enjoying marijuana is a civil liberty. Now, our government is waging a very expensive war against this idea. The war against marijuana, it's based on fear and lies, it's costing us billions of dollars, it's demoralizing our police force, it's corroding and eroding the credibility of parents and teachers when they need credibility to teach our kids how to get through the pitfalls of, of their young years. And it's also messing up hundreds of thousands of lives. In the last year, 800,000 Americans were arrested for marijuana. They've got criminal records now. These are not rich white guys. These are poor kids, and these are people of color, and these are people who cannot get through life with a bump in the road like that. It makes it very tough. Now, I bring a European perspective to this discussion, and I think we can learn from Europe because they've got drug problems too, and they treat it not as a criminal problem, but as a health challenge and as an education challenge. If we can take the crime out of this equation, we're going to do everybody a big favor. My European friends tell me that a society has to make a choice, tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And then they remind us that in the United States here, we're really into prisons. We lock up eight times as many people per capita as the Europeans do, and either there's something wrong with our laws or we're inherently more criminal people, and I think it's the former. What shapes American drug policy is fear. And we've got to overcome this fear. A lot of Americans think there's a whole reservoir of people that would love to ruin their lives if only marijuana was legal. The fact is, if you legalize marijuana tomorrow, not many more people would smoke pot. People who enjoy pot are already smoking it. It just doesn't need to be criminal. It's been 25 years since they arrested a person in the Netherlands for smoking pot, and it doesn't, they don't consume anymore. In fact, statistically, we Americans consume double the Dutch average. 10 years ago, the Portuguese decriminalize the consumption of all drugs. They just did a review and they think it makes a lot of sense. They take the crime out of the equation and now it becomes a health issue, an education issue, and people who want to smoke pot responsibility do and the sky does not fall. Now this fear thing is really getting out of hand. A lot of people think it's a gateway drug, marijuana. A couple of tokes and you're on the way to being a uh, heroin addict. Well, what they found out in Europe is the only thing gateway about marijuana is the fact that it's illegal. Because when it's illegal, people have to buy it from people on the streets selling stuff that's more addictive and more profitable. Hempfest is an exciting celebration of cannabis culture, but I feel a little frustrated because I've been working 10 years to try to help all of us not be criminals if we want to support or enjoy marijuana. We need to have a fun party this weekend, and then we need to remember to take it into the suburbs. Take it to people who are afraid. Check, 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 take the check, scare check, check. out of it. I got to remind you, we've got an opportunity right now to legalize marijuana in Washington state. Legalize, regulate, and tax. Now, there's a lot of idealists that don't like I-502 because it's got a lot of limits on it. I'll tell you, we got to get this thing through the electorate, and there's only one way to do that, and that is to be practical and pragmatic and recognize and acknowledge the legitimate fears in the electorate. Because, to be honest, you guys don't vote like the frightened people do. We need to vote and we need to present them something that's not so scary and that's what I-502 does. We need to work together to make marijuana 
not a criminal issue. Just like the prohibition of alcohol was overthrown, we can do that with marijuana. I am a hard-working, kid-raising, church-going, tax-paying citizen of the United States of America. And if I go home after a long day of work and I want to smoke a joint, that is my civil liberty. Is that right? All right, so go make I-102-502 pass and have a great time here at MFest. Happy travels, even if you're just staying home. Thank you.